Brothers and sisters in Christ, today is Pentecost 15, and in our worship service, we're encouraged to keep God's commands. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. May you have grace and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today's sermon text is recorded in the seventh chapter of the Gospel of Mark and its assorted verses, starting at verse 1. The Pharisees and some of the experts in the law came from Jerusalem and gathered around Jesus. They saw some of his disciples eating bread with unclean, that is, unwashed, hands. In fact, the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they scrub their hands with a fist, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come to the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions they adhere to, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, kettles, and dining couches. The Pharisees and the experts in the law ask Jesus, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders? Instead, they eat bread with unclean hands. He answered them, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They worship me in vain, teaching human rules as if they were doctrines. You abandon God's commandment, but hold to human traditions like the washing of pitchers and cups, and you do many other such things. He called the crowd to him again and said, Everyone, listen to me and understand. There is nothing outside of a man that can make him unclean by going into him. But the things that come out of a man are what make a man unclean. In fact, from within, out of people's hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual sins, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, unrestrained immorality, envy, slander, arrogance, and foolishness. All these evil things proceed from within and make a person unclean. We bow our heads in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord, there are many times when we foolishly fight against you. Help us to realize that you always know what is best and lead us to gladly and willingly do things your way. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, what is it that defiles a person? What is it that makes him unclean, profane, and impure? The first thing I thought of as I studied this text was a group of children and a large puddle. Any way you put those two things together, it's going to come up dirty. It's a natural recipe for filthy clothes and children who are in need of an immediate bath. It's also a natural recipe for something else, mud pies. I'm sure you can all remember making a few of those in your younger days, maybe even tasting a few. But I can also remember my mother saying that eating a little mud never hurt anybody. Now, I can't document that statement with medical proof, but regardless of whether eating mud harms the body or not, it certainly doesn't harm the soul. Yet there are things which do harm the soul, things which make a person spiritually unclean. So this morning I'd like us to ponder the question, what makes a person unclean? First of all, we need to recognize how this uncleanness comes about, and then we'll be ready to learn how it can be undone. Our text begins, The Pharisees and some of the experts in the law came from Jerusalem and gathered around Jesus. They saw some of his disciples eating bread with unclean, that is, unwashed, hands. The Pharisees and other leaders in the Jewish community taught that it was necessary to wash before eating a meal, and therefore eating with unwashed hands was considered by them to be a sin. So when they confronted Jesus with what his disciples were doing, Jesus quoted the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They worship me in vain, teaching human rules as if they were doctrines. 
you abandon God's commandment, but hold to human tradition like the washing of pitchers and cups, and you do many other such things. Jesus simply turned the tables on those hypocritical Pharisees by pointing out that they had abandoned God's laws in favor of human traditions. Even if it might have been unsanitary, his disciples weren't sinning by eating with unwashed hands. But the Pharisees were sinning by ignoring and even replacing God's laws. The Pharisees were like weeds. If your garden is anything like mine, you have a liberal selection of weeds in it. Now, we didn't plant them, nor do we take good care of them so they'll prosper and continue to grow. In fact, we pull them out so they don't rob the vegetables we planted of their nourishment. But those weeds keep coming back, and they continue to grow. That's what the Pharisees were like. Weeds, which could damage the crop of believers, which the Heavenly Father had planted. Religious leaders who were deceiving the people and leading them away from faith in the Savior. Sometime later, Jesus called a crowd of people to himself to address the same issue with them. No doubt they were a crowd like many of the other crowds who had come to hear Jesus speak. There would have been men, women, and children, rich and poor, people of low standing, and people who were climbing the social ladder. But whoever they were and whatever they did for a living, Jesus wanted them to listen and understand to pay close attention to his words, because Jesus was going to tell them something which was directly opposed to what they had been taught by their religious leaders from the days of their youth. They had been taught by the scribes and Pharisees that it was necessary to wash before eating a meal, and therefore eating with unwashed hands was considered to be a sin. It was a human rule, not a rule which God had established. So Jesus told them, There is nothing outside of a man that can make him unclean by going into him. But the things that come out of a man are what make a man unclean. What did Jesus mean with those words? And how could he so boldly oppose the tradition of the elders? It was going to take some understanding on the part of the people. But Jesus was confident that his Father would grant them the necessary degree of knowledge. And it's true. Many of the people understood the meaning of Jesus' statement, and they tried to live according to it. But the Pharisees were offended by what Jesus had said. Offended because they weren't followers of Jesus. They were spiritually blind. Now, isn't that interesting? They had Jesus, God's Son, the Savior of the world, standing right in front of them, offering eternal life and salvation to anyone who would believe in him, and they blindly rejected him. But even worse than that was the fact that they were blind leaders. They tried to take everybody else right along with them, and as trusted leaders, they were in a position to do so. Here's a lesson for all of us to take to heart. Don't believe everything the pastor tells you from the pulpit just because he's the pastor and he's supposed to know what he's talking about. Instead, check it out for yourselves in the Bible. Be like the Bereans who diligently searched the scriptures to see if what the Apostle Paul himself told them was really true. There are too many false prophets in the world today for, for us to simply sit back and take everything we see and hear at face value. We need to be sure that what's being preached to us is the pure message of the gospel. And don't think that we can't be deceived, because the Pharisees had even confused Jesus' chosen twelve disciples. In verse 17 we hear, After he had left the crowd and entered a house, his disciples asked him about this illustration. There really wasn't anything difficult about what Jesus had said regarding what makes a person unclean, and yet the disciples still had those false teachings which they had learned from the Pharisees spooking around in the back of their minds. They should have been among the first to recognize the meaning of Jesus' words, because they had studied under him for two years already. Because of that advantage, 
Much was expected of them, but even they were without understanding. So Jesus had to explain his statement in even clearer terms. In the closing words of our text, he said, What comes out of a man, that is what makes a man unclean. In fact, from within, out of people's hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual sins, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, unrestrained immorality, envy, slander, arrogance, and foolishness. All these evil things proceed from within and make a person unclean. The things which we eat have nothing to do with defiling our souls and making us unclean. Eating is simply a physical process which affects us only in a physical manner. So it's not the things which go into the mouth which defile a person. It's the things which come out of the mouth. These are the things which reflect what's in a person's heart. And from the list which Jesus gives us here, we can easily see that they're not pleasant things. They're things which truly make us unclean. How many of those things apply to us? Here's the list once again. Evil thoughts, sexual sins, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, unrestrained immorality, envy, slander, arrogance, and foolishness. If we're completely honest with ourselves, we need to admit that we are guilty of all of them to one degree or another. And what makes that even more terrible is that all these things are against the will and the command of our gracious God. The traditions of men, which the Pharisees were so concerned about, were nothing in comparison to the commandments which we have received from our God. His commandments constantly remind us that God doesn't want us to do those things. But we've done them anyway. We've broken his commandments, and breaking them is what makes us unclean. So through our own sinful actions and willful disobedience, we have made ourselves unclean. The question is, how can we fix that problem? And is it even possible for that problem to be changed? Can our sinfulness ever be undone? You know the answer. It has been and always will be the same. The problem of sin has already been undone by Jesus, the perfect Son of God who rescued us from our sins by paying for those sins in our place. Now, as wonderful as that is, we also need to be careful that we don't take what Jesus has done for us for granted or view it too lightly. Remember, it's sin that makes us unclean. And sin doesn't simply go away if we just ignore it. It'll only get worse. Sin must be dealt with, and we can't do anything on our own to get rid of it. Our sinful condition can only be cured by Jesus. He is the one who has washed us clean, and it cost him his life to do so. May we continually strive to thank Jesus for that tremendous sacrifice by living our lives in thankfulness and repentance. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. O kind and loving Father, we thank you for your gracious will that no one should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We thank you that your will has been done in us, for you have called us to salvation through faith in your Son. Lead us to continue to do the things you would have us do, that through our words and actions, others may be called to faith by the Spirit. You have also commanded us to let the little children come to you and to bring up our children in your nurture and admonition. And therefore, we ask you to give us Christian parents who will faithfully worship together with their children, parents who will not only bring those children to our Sunday school, but who will also study your word themselves in our adult Bible class. We further ask you to give wisdom, discretion, kindness, and perseverance to all of our teachers of God's word. Teach them so they may teach others. 
And finally, we ask you to give our children humble, teachable, and ready minds, minds which will eagerly absorb all the instruction given to them in your word. As we ourselves gain more knowledge about you, may you use us to spread your word to others, that all, from the least to the greatest, may praise you now and forever. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.